Hi all. Our instructive game today will feature the theme Light Squared Grip. You might want to review Light Square Invasion video where Adams was playing Kasparov. In this game, it's Nigel Short as Black playing Kasparov. In the London match of 1987, it was one of the games in a six game match, 25 minutes per player, televised on Channel 4. Um, so Kasparov kicked off with Knight F3. And Nigel Short played the opening very innovatively. He played d5, and after d4 he played bishop g4. So, this is a, an unusual second move. After knight e5, the, the bishop just retreated now to bishop f5. But it has some transposition possibilities to look more respectable now, especially after Short's um, c6, which comes up later. But first, after c4, instead of Short playing something... Um, bog standard. He chases the knight on f6, so he weakens slightly his king, but it's very difficult for Kasparov to exploit this. And Kasparov retreats the knight back to f3. And we see here there's a potential maneuver by Nigel Short to play bishop g6 to f7 to increase his grip on the d5 square. And once he does increase that grip on d5, it seems later that Kasparov's c4 square is kind of under great fire and intensity. We're going to see that in this game. So... Now c6 was played, so Short's building up this fortress, protecting that d5 square. Overprotecting it, as Nimzovich would say. So after e6, we see that nice triangle. So Short's quite solid now in the centre. And after g3, Nigel Short, he's prepared to give up his dark squared bishop. So this will also increase the grip on, on, the, dark on the light squares, making e4 less tempting for white later. So bishop g2, knight e7. Pretty standard routine moves now by both sides. But after queen b3, short plays a5. So after a3, now short gives up the dark squared bishop and plays knight d7. Kasparov doesn't want to take that pawn because it will be perpetual on his queen. He plays actually knight d2. And now short plays a4. So he's getting a lot of his pawns on light squares. And he's also fixing this bishop behind its own pawn chain. So like in that Adams-Kasparov game, you know, this bishop can be quite potentially bad if uh, black is intensifying the light squared pressure and these pawns are all on dark squares, fixed on dark squares here. Queen a2 and now bishop g6. So this manoeuvre to f7 is reinforcing, you know, the grip. After e4, bishop f7, rook b1. Now rook b8 is played and short's also going to play now for b5. So after queen c2, b5. C, D, C, D, a very ple pleasant position, a great success out of the opening for this innovative way of playing it. To queen D3, queen A5, rook E1. Kasparov has not got too many attacking prospects here, and Short continues positioning with rook FC8. And now something has to be done about the C3 pawn, so Kasparov plays rook B4. We see now knight c6 and now knight back to e7. So short offering repetition with rook b4. But now Kasparov, he's a very ambitious, he plays rook c2. So this gives short the chance now to just play knight b6 and get into that c4 square. So he's, he's going to prepare his outpost. But first playing rook c6, consolidating his position first a little bit with that e6 pawn. And after rook b2, now knight c4. So after rook b4, queen c7. Knight takes, rook takes. Bishop d2, and now queen c6. So Short's potentially going to play e takes d5 and knight d5 <clears throat> with an even more pleasant position. So the pressure is building up on Kasparov. Does he want Short to play this, e to, this d takes e? No, he doesn't. He plays e5. This has a downside, though. The tension is released, and after f5, Short potentially can reroute his bishop back to h5. So this is not bad. And he's got no worries now on this e line. His uh, position is very, very secure here. So bishop f1, potentially, though, to try and win the exchange. But after bishop h5, queen e3, Short showed he was, wasn't worried at all with bishop h5. He could have moved his queen away. And then, and then, but the thing is, then that pawn would have dropped. So he's actually offering the exchange sacrifice here. I think he had to. But Kasparov doesn't want to take it. After h6... Kasparov plays rook e b1, because if he took it, e takes d5, and that knight is huge on d5. So let's have a look at this. Bishop takes c4, e, e takes d5, c, sorry, d5 takes c4, rook e b1, and now knight d5, and it's a huge knight. Very difficult for white to infiltrate in black's position. 
black would have an ideal light squared fortress here. And um, in fact, Ribka here thinks um, black black's better. And in fact, knight takes b4, black can win back the exchange immediately. But actually, you know, maybe black wouldn't just play bishop f3 or something. So anyway, Kasparov, he didn't want to win that exchange in this position. So after h6, he played rook b1, and now king f7 was played. So short's tempting Kasparov, and also gaining some time on the clock. You know, is he going to play bishop takes c4? So rook b2, king back to g8. Now f3, bit of a liability to play f3 if the queen's ever going to move away, leaving that pawn vulnerable. Queen a6, rook b1, knight c6. And now finally, Kasparov does decide to take that, um, that exchange sacrifice. Because after e takes d5, rook b2, knight e7, Kasparov now plays a pawn sacrifice, so he might have judged this to be okay for white. But um, it turns out, after knight takes d5, this knight is still very powerful. Queen c5, and short has to give up the b5 pawn. So is, is Kasparov breaking through here? And now this is a remarkable second phase of the game, where short um, takes on f3 now, and doesn't mind after rook c7 th these checks and the queen even coming very aggressively at, at short's king because he plays here first check and now rook e7 and his king's quite safe and not only that his king can start marching to Kasparov's king believe it or not so after rook 1b2 king g6 and what can Kasparov do about king h5 to g4 not much here and Kasparov's um, bishop here is a bit of a passive piece as we mentioned earlier, this could be a bad piece. Bishop c1, and just king h5 now. So short continues this march with his king. His previous light squared strategy has worked out exceptionally well. And Kasparov must have been under great time pressure here now as well, because it's a 25-minute game. After rook a8, queen c5, a3 is under fire. Kasparov plays rook c8, he just drops the a3 pawn. And after g4, check, this, this is a hopeless move. Just bishop takes g4 here, because after rook takes c4, queen a1 is tactically it's crushing. For example, um, well, I think Kasparov resigned here, but if he had played rook c2, then knight e3 check. And if king f2, knight takes c2. So this um, bishop is on pre. For example, queen takes e7, queen takes c1, and there's no dangerous checks for the black king. So like queen e8, just, just ta ta taking on h4. So that was a remarkable um, speed game, 25 minutes, very exciting to watch on TV. Um, but it just showed, um, initially, a great light squared strategy. And then later, short, you know, expertly defending his king. Let's have a quick look in overview and summary of this game. So short played a very novel opening against Kasparov, with this um, f6 being played, and now c6. So almost like a Slav defence with f6 being injected. But um, f6 had its point that the bishop could reroute to f7. So black played a very nice light square grip strategy, even giving up his dark squared bishop to increase the pressure on the, on the light squares. And playing now later for b5, so he's intensifying pressure on white's c4 square. And Kasparov first of all released that tension there, and now short started ganging up on the c file. Uh, Kasparov, though, he could have played for repetition, but he didn't. So he allowed Short to get this outpost on c4. And after that, this e5 was another concession by Kasparov. So there's no sort of counterplay on the e file now. And now this exchange sacrifice, you know, would have been great for black. Kasparov avoided it for a while, but then he took it later because perhaps he thought this pawn sacrifice was going to be good with d5 here. So at least give him some attacking opportunities and win black's b5 pawn. But um, Short was able to defend his king. He allowed both of um, Kasparov's great resources coming to, to his first rank. But this rook e7 now, in this position, stopped any queen e8 checks. So this is um, as safe as houses, believe it or not, this position. So after rook b2, king g6, and black's getting the upper hand now, uncontested. Very solid position. And Kasparov now just started falling to pieces. He, he just played this g4 check, which was harmless, because after rook takes c4, queen a1. And now there's this horrible pin on the bishop, which allows knight e3 check to be played if rook c2. 
So um, it was quite a heavy defeat, Sporoff. His only defeat, I believe, to Nigel Short in his whole career. I couldn't find any other game on Chess Live DE where um, Short's beating Sporoff with the black pieces. So um, I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.